let's get started with the current ladies and hear what they have to say about this very important topic. Welcome, ladies. Hi. Hi. Glad to have you here today. And welcome back, Colleen Otero. We're so Hello. glad you're here with us today again. Glad to be here. Well, thank you. Ladies, I know this is tough. This is tough to even talk about, but we're going to do it because I feel like the Lord really wants us as a station to be put in a position to influence others, to educate others, and to help us to understand what's happening right here in Central Florida and, of course, around the nation. Before we start talking about it, a lot of times viewers will call in and say, oh, your jewelry, your jewelry is so pretty. Well, we have something special about our jewelry today. Kristen, you want to tell yes. us about it? Well, um, our jewelry comes from, uh, you know, Trades of Hope. Trades yes. of Hope, yes. <laughs> Trades of Hope, which helps marginalized women and women who have suffered from abuse. And so you are able to go onto our Facebook page and to purchase some, any of this um, jewelry. We'll have it on our Facebook page Beautiful. at Current Facebook. Um, and you can go online and you can find that at our website, but all of this will be out there, and it's beautiful, and, and also the it's go toward right human back. trafficking, period, wow. all of it. Yes. Nothing comes to the station, nothing goes to individuals. Any kind of profit goes straight to women who have been, like you said, Kristen, so beautifully marginalized and are victims of human trafficking. So that's where our jewelry's coming from today. I know you wanted yeah. to know. Yes. And I think the women made it, right? The women right. make right. the jewelry, absolutely. So it's giving them purpose yes. alongside of it. Powerful. That's right. All it's women, powerful. Men's everywhere. And yeah. we are about empowering yeah. women too, in particular, those those who are victims. So I'm so happy that, that we could do this today. Yes. Yeah. Well, let's talk about human trafficking. Now, what do you know about yeah. it, first of all? Did you know that the, we were such a hub right here in Central Florida? Well, I, you know, I had heard it before that we were like fourth in the nation mm. or something like that yeah. for human trafficking. But, you know, yesterday, and I just thank you for even bringing this up because mm. it was such like an eye opener to me of what our children are going through mm -hmm. and just... I mean, I've been for four hours yesterday, I just watched story after story of kids who have been redeemed out of it and realized we better get this message out there and we better open our eyes up to what's Have happening. you thought about your children? Now, you have boys, Colleen. You I have do. four boys. So we don't want to just talk about daughters and exactly. girls. There's a problem with sons, too, and boys being mm -hmm. victimized. Uh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, a lot of times when we're with our children, you don't want to even go right. there mm -hmm. in your mind, but you do. You, you want to make sure that they're taken care of. You want to know where they're going to be at all times you know at time everyone wants a cell phone now but you're almost afraid to give them a cell phone but then right. you realize you can track them on the cell yeah. phone <laughs> yeah. you know but it, it's such a difficult to know place to know that we're third I mean in the nation mm -hmm. for that it is mm -hmm. really like it just hurts my heart. Well, it's one of the hard. one of the most important things that I realized in researching this topic and, and and studying it a little bit was, I think I misunderstood and I did not realize that these are children who are coming home every night yeah. to their families. Right. You would think that sex trafficking or they're kidnapped or they're because we think typically internationally like kids that mm -hmm. are stolen and they're put in brothels, but these are children who are befriended typically by a male, and he may be wealthy, but you don't know where his wealth came from, and he befriends them because they're lonely or their parents may be gone or they may not have both parents and he basically seduces them with friendship first and then these women these girls start thinking that he's a boyfriend and then he takes compromising pictures and then he sells them start and, selling them and he has them for life as soon yeah. as he takes that first picture mm -hmm. these girls are blackmailed mm -hmm. I mean they are just bribed for life because mm -hmm. he looks and says if you try to do anything you know I'm gonna plaster this all over your yeah. Facebook and I'm gonna show your parents I'm gonna show your church Right. And all of a sudden, this girl is so scared, you know, and then he starts threatening her with her life. And I, I mean, I'm just sitting here watching these stories of these girls and their stories. I mean, one girl alone, and I don't know if it's okay to say this, but the man, when he took her for two days, they say that's normally, they'll treat him good for two days. Mm -hmm. And then from there, they start just treating him awful, breaking them down. Mm -hmm. And he put her into a dog kennel mm -hmm. for 40 days days and only allowed her to come out to be abused. Mm -hmm. oh. I mean, this is the mental breakdown of our society and how they're viewing women. Well, and for the kids that are, I mean, that's hor horrible, but for the right. kids that are coming home each night, you know, as adults, I would think if somebody took compromising pictures of me, I would not want that to be out, Correct. but I would hope that I would have the wherewithal to be like, well, fine, we will sort through that. We'll figure that out, mm -hmm. but you don't have me in this bind. But for right. children who are 12 to 14 years old, they don't know that. They think that's the worst thing in the world to get in trouble with their parents. And that's what broke my heart so badly to, yeah. was to think these kids are coming home each night to hopefully loving families, but they can't 
share any of this with their families because well, they're so scared. The, this mm. is the red flag that I want us to and want our viewers to take away today is that there could be a little boy, <clears throat> a little girl sitting next to you in the pew in church who has been victimized. And we don't want to think about that. We want to think that like Kristen and Carolyn that you've said that it happens internationally. But because it's happening locally and those kids are coming home every night, they're fearful not only of their for their lives, but maybe they, they, um, they threaten a sibling or I'm going to kill your mom and dad or I'm going to kill your brother or sister if you tell me don't tell anybody and you're you know these are 12 year old little children of course they're not going to tell right. so what do we do as parents and grandparents to protect our children what are you all we doing have to educate them yeah we have to have these conversations you know we have to talk to our children if anyone makes you feel uncomfortable or the type of like what you just described like to some degree letting them know what type of things to expect you know what are the things you can encounter with someone that may seem nice and all of a sudden it's like they turn on you I mean have these conversations with your children to let them know like these things unfortunately are happening and, and that's difficult because you don't want to no. you, you feel like well, why and then am somebody I sharing today will say oh well, you're just being an alarmist why should you scare your children exactly to death? scare your children to death exactly. <laughs> I say something, though? when I was I mean yesterday the thing that kept saying is they prey on children who are vulnerable right. yeah. these are kids when you brought that up these are kids who are coming home Home to one parent which that's we're not saying that that's bad but what we're saying is we need to be aware of what they're and these are kids who parents don't take any time with them I mean they were saying that these men will literally speak with these children for hours and just listen to them mm -hmm. and it's part of their game they said how many mm -hmm. parents have hours to sit and listen yeah, to their right, children right, mm -hmm. how many and one little girl said on there I never received a birthday cake mm. these are kids who are coming from a home life that is so bad and you know and that does, I'm not talking about financial bad I'm talking about emotionally mm -hmm. bad and for me as a parent it made me where I tucked my kids into bed last night and I said do you know mm -hmm. how much we value you mm -hmm. how much you are loved and how much if we have got as parents, I feel to start pouring into our children, taking those extra 10 minutes yeah. to talk to them and tell them how special they are. So yeah. they're not running out into the arms of a man mm -hmm. the first time that they say, you're beautiful, mm -hmm. you're special, because that's what we're dealing with. Well, and let's talk about social media because this is a lot of where it's happening too when we can talk about runaways and we can talk about kids from from broken homes and all that but it's also truthfully Carolyn it's it's little girls who are in chat rooms who are just having a good time so true. you know they're talking to men that they don't know the man is deceiving them and then all of a sudden he's saying well let's meet somewhere I, you know I've got a puppy to show you I've got an ice cream cone or, or whatever it is the chat rooms is what I've been reading about is wow. such a dangerous place do you allow your kids to go into chat rooms absolutely no. not and you have to. I kept thinking about the whole iPhone and tracking. Correct. You've got to know where your kids are at all times. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be reading texts and you've got to be knowing who's in their lives. Who are they speaking to? Whether and, and so my daughter, she's sixteen and so it's it's not Facebook, it's Instagram and Snapchat. Yeah. So I routinely look at who she Snapchats, who the names are, you know, you have to know who they're talking to at all times. Mm -hmm. Well, I think something else that I think is important when, when talking about what we can do about this. So we're, we've been focused on the child side and as parents, but I think that one of the interesting things from um, this YouTube clip that this Oregon state senator uh, spoke on um, a TED talk about was that we view the men who are Johns differently from the women, the girls, that are labeled prostitutes. No child is a prostitute. Amen. Mm -hmm. No child should That's ever right. be labeled that. The right. child's a victim mm -hmm. and the man is exploitive. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes with juries, when, when prosecutors go up to try these cases, often it doesn't make it to a jury because they're afraid the juries will see that as their dad, their husband, their brother, and they will give them get them off with a light sentence. And they also will see the girl as a prostitute. And I think that's terrible language. And so the whole thought of changing our language towards how we feel, it's sex trafficking. Mm. These children, not, not prostitutes, they're exploited and they're victims. Mm -hmm. Well, what did they say? They said, no girl sets out to be a prostitute. Right. Mm -hmm. And what was it? I, I think I saw that same thing. It was like 159 girls were criminalized. Mm -hmm. They caught two of the pimps and none of the Johns. 
Right. So it's like all the, and what I can't even stand is that we even give them such a beautiful name as right. a John. Mm -hmm. I mean, these people are rapists, yeah. they are criminals, they are. Mm -hmm. and it's wrong. Some of our legislators who are aware of this are doing some things now, hopefully, to change the laws. The language needs to be changed, like Kristen, you were saying, yeah. then the laws need to be changed, right. because these little girls and boys are victims. They are not prostitutes. Right. The, the victim is the one who needs to be protected. And in our society right now, we're protecting the other side. So it's, it's crazy. You, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. It is. You you mentioned the chat rooms, and for the, my boys, it's not that I will allow them into a chat room, but one of the things, the video games, mm -hmm. they're live now, mm -hmm. so they're oh. dialoguing, and it's great for parents to be aware of this because yeah. they're dialoguing with other children. You talked about language or who they think yes. are other children, yeah. And you also talk about language on social media. They think they're your friends on the video yeah. games. That's my friend, and I have to really break down what a friend truly is and someone that you know that mommy knows that daddy knows we know their parents we know what church they go to what car they drive their license plate perhaps their social security <laughs> number <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Whatever it right. takes. Man. That's not a friend. <laughs> and, know, to, like, yeah. and to recognize that times really have changed. I know that's such yeah. a cliche, but I used to let you go have sleepovers mm. anytime oh, wow. you wanted anywhere. Yes. Today, you do not do sleepovers. Yeah. You just do not oh, do that gosh. unless you so know that parent mm -hmm. and you know that their values align with yours. And do you all have that feeling about sleepovers? Absolutely. Do you protect yeah. your yeah. kids from I've that? I've talked yeah. about this once before, but I once let Anna Kate sleep at a house that I didn't know the parents that well. And I got this very weird feeling like wow. I should probably go get her. Um, I called, it was before she had a phone, she was younger, she was about 12. I called, talked to her, she was fine. The next day she told me that she really didn't want to stay there ever again. Wow. And I thought, yeah. hey, so your instincts stay with right. them. I should have mm -hmm. gone and gotten her that minute. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to appear like, you know. That mother. The overprotective <laughs> mother, right? Or embarrass her. Or embarrass yeah, her, but right? But. I mean, you got to really happen, not care, but, right? You got to not care. Well, that statistic it said one out of every four girls and one out of every six boys mm -hmm. will be sexually abused. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't alarm us to mm -hmm. go, what you just said right. is we need to not care right. and do what it takes. Mm -hmm.